Hey everyone, it's Wingspan TT, and I'm back against Black Ace with Exalted Darkness, and um, I'm going to keep this opening hand. Normally I wouldn't keep a two-land hand, but I know he's probably playing Celestial Light, and I got the bomb, Knight of Infamy, protection from white, it's racist. I'm going to play Duty Bound Dead on the first turn, Exalted, and what's really great about Exalted is just how quickly you can get crazy damage off the board. You could, in theory... I guess you could attack for 4 damage on the second turn by playing a 1-1 one, one Exalted on the first turn and then playing 2 Exalted creatures on the next turn. That is insane. That's a lot of pressure. And again, because of Exalt, the way Exalted works, I'm going to play the planes, then drop the Knight of Infamy. Now the Exalted mechanic is going to be on the board. Now I attack with this one. It gets 2 stacks of Exalted to make it a 2-4 creature and attack. And then I can attack for 4 every turn for rest of the game, and there's nothing he could do about it. Now again, I would like to draw more land, but I have a pretty good hand here. I got Knight of Glory, 2 for 2, 1 protection from black, which isn't going to help me here too much. Exalted. Got Royal Assassin. This guy goes back to the old school days of magic. That is just brilliant. Okay. I have my other, one of my other endgame creatures here, Battle Grace Angel 5 for 4 for Flying Exalted. And just like the other one, it gives all of your small creatures cool capacity, and that is whenever a creature attacks alone, basically the Exalted Mechanic against Life Link. Very cool. So even if you just had her, if you attacked alone, she would be, sorry, she would be a 5-5 five, five, uh, uh, Life Link Flyer when you attacked. And then this thing, 5 for 3-4, god damn, it's ugly. But whenever you, all of your other creatures get bigger, and whenever you play a white or black spell, uh, I'll explain it later. I'll explain it later. No reason to get into now. Play Knight of Gro Glory. Gro Gro Glory. I was gonna say, like, jeez, I can't pronounce shit. I'm getting, like, pronouncing like I'm Japanese or something. Not racist against Japanese. You have to understand that this is just the way language works. I mean, same way. The French can't pronounce TH sounds. or um, It's just not in their language. There is no TH sound. They always pronounce the TH like a T. So that is why you hear Z, Z, Z. They say the Z or they say the F. Sometimes they say birth, birthday the same way that, you know, someone may be like slangy in the United States would say it. Um, it's just a French thing, just the way, okay, there's no L's in Japanese, they can't pronounce L's. You know, there's no U, there's no U sound in English, really, there's no, like, sound, there's no, like, sure, you know, there's none of those sounds in English, so we can't pronounce it, I'm sure we sound awfully silly trying to pronounce, like, um, I don't know, foreign words. I guess he's actually playing Peacekeepers here, which is interesting. I feel like Peacekeepers is the least played deck in Duels of the Planeswalkers. First Strike, Vigilance, 2-1. He could attack with a 1-1 guys here, and basically I'm not going to sacrifice my 2-1 for his 1-1, but I will block one of them. Take half damage. If I take one damage a turn and he takes four, that is okie dokie with me. Hopefully I get the Royal Assassin on the board, which will pretty much shut down his entire offense. But this is also cool. The Squire. Look at the Squire. This is some weird perspective. I feel like this painter doesn't understand perspective. Like, alright, this guy, like... <laughs> How how far away is his hand? How big is this thing? This is just really fucked up. Like, you get the impression that he's like 400 feet. I don't know. This is just weird. I'm going to play the Squire. And then attack with my protection from White Knight. Um, and White and Black have always had this interesting mechanic where they have these two opposite knights that are kind of like opposed, diametrically opposed. Um... People ask, what does protection do? The creature cannot be blocked by whatever it has protection from. So can't be blocked by white creatures. Cannot take damage from white sources. Cannot be the target, okay, of white spells or abilities. And cannot be enchanted by white enchantments. That means if some, a creature gets enchanted by something that's white and then gets protection from white later, it'll fall off. It is not the same as if a creature gets um, hexproof or something like that. Now, it is possible for him to kill my knight, but he has to play Day of Judgment and kill everything on the board. If he destroys all creatures, that doesn't target it, it doesn't deal damage to it, it doesn't um, block it, so it could kill all creatures, but he would have to do that. He's going to lose the game really fast if he doesn't get something like that on the board. Let's see what he drops. He's just going to swing with everything. It's fine, I can take three damage, because that is going to take... Uh, three damage would take like seven turns to kill me. So I'm just going to again block one of these things, take the three damage, and swing back at him. And if I get a swamp and I get the Royal Assassin in play, that's great. If I don't, then he's going to die next turn. He has to absolutely kill this. If I get another planes, I can play my Battle Grace Angel, also acceptable, but it's not necessary. And protection hoses things bad. It is a hose. That's an old school magic term. You say like one card hoses other effects. What is he playing here? Prevent all damage. Alright, fine. That's cool. 
I do have the option here of regenerating this guy this turn, so I do have better blocking options than I did before now that I have 4 mana. And I did want to explain this guy a little bit. Deathbringer Liege, 5 mana for 3, 4. Yes, it pumps your guys. That's great. Whenever you cast a white spell, you can tap target creature. Whenever you cast a black spell, you may destroy target tapped creature. But if you play a black and white spell, you can actually do both. You can tap a creature and then destroy it, which makes this card very powerful. It's already powerful because basically, just by having it out, they're not going to want to tap their creatures because they don't know. They don't know if you're going to cast a black spell next turn and kill a tapped creature. And they can't just leave one creature untapped to block because they don't know. They don't know if you're going to be able to tap that creature. So he's going to swing for one, two... 3, 4, 5, 6. Bring me down to 10. If I don't block this, next turn he can block for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Mm. But if I uh, leave this, I can still win in 2 turns. Alright, so... Oh, shit! Oh, my God. I really did mean to block at least one of those things. Oh, God. This, this is going to cost me the game, isn't it? Because I'm dumb. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I guess... He can't kill me next turn unless he gets some kind of if he gets some kind of boost where all his creatures get plus one plus one I guess he could kill me I could just suicide block everything then what is it gonna do and if I could survive and get one extra land I could play the angel and attack and then gain some extra life and hold off for another turn I did mess up there I did mean to block uh, with this duty bound dead but I'm so trigger happy with the tab key Oh, he loses. Oh, shit. I didn't even calculate. All right, guys, I'm Wingspan TT, and I'll see you at TopTierTactics.com. Cheers. Goodbye.